Uh, the next piece is design, right? So you're taking those requirements uh, and you're, depending on the project, will create your design document. So let's say this is a construction project. Well, they have blueprints, right? They don't just start the build after the plan. They have to design what this is going to look like. If this is an IT project, I heard it was an internet page project that you did. You're not just going to jump right into the build and have to know the first time you need to design what the system is going to look like. What are the requirements? If you're built a building a Nike.com webpage, or you can have a yellow swish, or you can have a red swish, those are all of the design elements that you would create a prototype to show your consumer or your stakeholder what it's going to look like before you actually deliver. Today we are in New York across from the United Nations and I'll be giving a speech on the topic seamless project management for the executive assistant. We're partnering with a great organization called ELS which is the Executive Leadership Support Forum based out of Chicago. They're here today. Let's get started. My name is Phoebe Yates and I am one of the producers of the Executive Leadership Support Forum. Today we're here in New York City hosting our forum for the second time in this wonderful city. And a little bit about ELS, we host a two-day business education course for senior level and executive assistants. We truly want to empower assistants to have the confidence they need to continue to grow and expand in their role. And so what we're doing, we are conducting some workshops and hands-on sessions that, so that assistants can further develop those skills and become a leader. So this year's agenda is inspired by MBA curriculum and one of the educational objectives we wanted to align between executives and assistants is that of project management. So today we had Josh Lerner from Pace University and Lerner Consulting Management lead a workshop on how to further develop those project management skills and he provided some great templates for assistants to utilize in future projects. In addition, we have a website where we share articles and resources for executive assistants so that even if they aren't able to attend the forum or as a supplement to the forum, uh, they can continue their education through learning from other instructors um, through an MBA curriculum with project management and managing up styles. Josh Lerner. Josh Lerner is the president and CEO of Lerner Management Consulting, and he is also a professor for project management at Pace University, the Center for Professional Studies. Please help me welcome Josh. Welcome, my name is Josh Lerner, as mentioned. And our topic is seamless project management for the executive assistant. Uh, by a show of hands, who here has heard of PMI, the Project Management Institute? Okay, well, pretty much half the course. Uh, and then who here has uh, received their PMP? Okay, a couple of people. Uh, I think that just piggybacking off of the poll results, who here are aspiring to get their PMP or CAPM? Okay, excellent. All right, so we're going to start very high level on the construct and fundamental of project management. 
So we're going to start with this question. This is very interactive. Uh, we'll throw this out to the audience. What is a project? How would you define a project? Any thoughts? If you hear project, what do you think of <coughs> at your organization? An assignment moved to a team that it, uh, it requires a team to execute. Excellent. Requires a team to execute. There's a team involved. There are some deliverables. What about and what are some projects that you guys execute as EAs? I understand you guys get multiple initiatives, multiple tasks, multiple projects. What are some examples of some projects back at your, your client organization? Sure. Um, one project I had is we had to create um, an intranet page for our department, so that was a project for a different event. Okay, so an IT project. Right. Web page. Any others? Department moves. Department moves is a common one that I find in that space. Any others? Sure. Video shoots. Okay, explain. So, for example, um, my boss was invited to, to Thank you. Okay, so what is project management? A bit tough to define. What would you think of when you hear project management? Yes. Creating a structure and timeline from beginning to end. Excellent. And having uh, milestones by when, so specific measurable results that you, know, you have a plan and you execute the plan. Okay, I think she just took the actual textbook answer <laughs> on project management. Excellent. Very good. Okay, so we're going to throw in. Um, the textbook answer as deemed by PMI, the Project Management Institute. A project, if you were to get quizzed, this is an actual question on the test. We're not allowed to tell you the test questions, but guaranteed what is a project would come up. Uh, by definition, we'll just read this verbatim, is a temporary endeavor undertaken to create a unique product, service, or result. So the key word there that was just touched on is that it is temporary. It is not ongoing, it is not something that goes on in perpetuity. So if you look at some of the examples, projects come in different sizes, different complexities, different durations, different price tags, right, in different disciplines. Uh, this could be a, a floor move, right, or a department move. This could be a dinner party that you're planning with your friends. Uh, also uh, firing up a new uh, training program. So not the training delivery in and of itself, that would be considered and operation, right? Projects versus operations. Uh, we've got some more research and development with prosthetic limbs. Maybe it's a house project, an IT project, or a major construction project. Okay, so we want to make that differentiation between a project that it has a definitive start and end date, it doesn't go on forever, versus operations, which is something that uh, continually occurs. Another example I like to use is if you are starting a new help desk or call center at your organization, the startup of that effort is considered a project. Once you staff your call center and people are answering call calls and answering and uh, recording trouble tickets, that becomes operations. Make sense? Okay, great. Now, project management by definition is the application of knowledge, skills, tools, and techniques to project activities to meet the project requirements. All right, so in order for a profession to be considered a profession, it needs three main attributes. The first is a body of specialized knowledge. So we in PMI, we actually have something called the PMBOK. Who's heard, who here has heard of the PMBOK? Okay, a couple of people. Uh, it's right down there, it's a P-M-B-O-K. That is short for the Project Management Body of Knowledge. It is about that thick, about six to 700 pages, and we advise anyone who is interested in sitting for the examination, the PMP exam, that you read that from front to end, and after you're done reading it, read it again. Okay, it's not an easy read, or you can take our courses where we'll help guide you through the process. So we have our own, um, almost, almost considered like a methodology. The second thing you need are common standards and vocabulary. Every profession needs its own vocabulary, They're your own speak. If I start throwing out terms to you like BAC, Budget Act Completion, CPI, SPI, Cost Performance Index, Schedule Performance Index, Planned Value, we have our own vocabulary in our profession. 
And a final thing you need is certification. So as already mentioned, we hold the PMP credential. Uh, we've proven it is uh, the most valuable in the project management profession. Uh, there is another one in uh, Europe called the Prince 2. Who here has heard of Prince 2? Okay, not as common, but um, from a compensation perspective, from, from a skills perspective, and from an employer seeking to match candidates to job vacancy notice, uh, the PMP is uh, our highest credential. Uh, so we have uh, other certifications that we're going to get into later in the program. Okay, we're still keeping it very high level. So the PLC, a project, regardless of type, as we showed you on the first slide, will typically go through the same life cycle. Let's take a look. So this is our standard life cycle. We call it the IPEC model. Anyone can guess why we call it the IPEC model? <laughs> right there, right? So it is the first letter, it is an acronym. So initiating, planning, executing, controlling. Technically that's considered monitoring and controlling, but you kind of lose the, uh, the nice mnemonic there. So controlling and closing. Let's take a look even further here. So in taking those same, let's call them stages, we actually call them process groups, but those stages, you see how it kind of trickles down like a staircase? We call that the waterfall model, right? Because as you're going from initiating to planning to executing, it may not be a true finish of initiating. There may be some overlap, so we call this the waterfall model, which is very typical on standard projects. So let's take a little closer look here. So initiating, what happens when you're in the initiating stage of your project? This is the beginning. It's usually the executive project sponsor that has a role, that is not a title. That can be the president, it can be an executive vice president, it can be a director, uh, depending on what your organization looks like. Identifies that there is a need and an opportunity to do this thing, to do this project in the organization. The second thing you need is a project charter. Who here is familiar with a project charter? Okay, that is a very important document, and we're gonna get into that further, on setting up the project, authorizing you um, as the role. Again, a project manager can be considered a title, or it can be considered a role. Your, your title may not be project manager, but you are, in essence, managing the project, All right? Then you move into planning. So this is where you have what we call your project management plan. Well, what is that? When you are in the throes of your project midstream, that's not the time to be figuring out the rules of the road. You're going to be encountered with risks. You're going to be encountered with issues. There are going to be changes. We call it scope creep, where the stakeholders will say, we want these five other things that we initially didn't ask for in the beginning of the project. Anybody get that? Right? Last minute requests. We call that scope creep and gold plating. So, that part of your project management plan are the rules of the road documents, I like to call them. How are you gonna handle risk? We have a risk management plan, a cost management plan. If you need to procure certain commodities in your organization, whether it's furniture, whether it's IT equipment, whether it's office supplies, what are the procurement rules? We have a procurement management plan. And also, this is where you collect estimates. Well, how much is this project going to cost? If it's an IT project, you may need a developer. Right? So how much is that developer uh, making per hour if you have to go outside and hire consultants? How many hours is it going to take for them to complete that? Or if it's a construction project, right, a new floor design, you have different laborers involved. Now you'll notice we kind of um, scale this down a little bit, we call planning, and underneath there is a, another subject section called the analyze. So these go hand in hand, plan and analyze. In the analyze stage, you are collecting requirements from your stakeholders. It could be your executives, it could be their stakeholders, whoever the project is for. This is where you are uh, collecting all of your requirements and then you are translating them into what we call functional designs, okay? Uh, the next piece is design, right? So you're taking those requirements uh, and you're, depending on the project, will create your design document. So let's say this is a construction project. Well, they have blueprints, right? They don't just start the build after the plan. They have to design what this is going to look like. If this is an IT project, I heard there was an intranet page project that you did, you're not just gonna jump right into the build and have developers start punching keys. You need to design what the system is going to look like. What are the requirements? 
If you're built uh, building a Nike.com webpage, or you can have a yellow swish, or you can have a red swish, those are all of the design elements that you would create a prototype to show your consumer or your stakeholder what it's going to look like before you actually deliver it. That's the design. Then, this is the most expensive and the longest stage of your project. This is the build. This is where the rubber meets the road. So in using that same analogy of a construction project, this is where obviously you're uh, erecting a new building or you're design, uh, setting up a new floor uh, or you're building the actual system. That's your build. And then before you go live, you have to do what? You have to test. And based on the requirements that you collected back in the analyze phase, you want to make sure you're testing every single requirement right, before you put that into production. Okay. Uh, and then finally, you close out. Every project needs a good close. You're closing out the contracts. Uh, you're doing all your documentation. And one of the most important deliverables in this stage is what we call the lessons learned. Who here is familiar with the lessons learned who have ever done the lessons learned? Okay, a couple of people. So the lessons learned is a document where you are then, as the project manager, saying what went well and what didn't go so well. Now, why do you think you want to document what didn't go so well for? Who would that be for? Well, maybe you have another project coming up, and maybe you're not the project manager. Maybe it's somebody else. And they have a similar project. They can watch all the pitfalls that you've overcome and how you resolved it, and that is a transferable document that you can use from project to project. Right? It's a, it's a document that's often neglected, in my experience that I've seen, uh, but very critical. All right, so this is just a high-level view of what every project would go through. So think about the projects, uh, and I want to even call them problems, that you're trying to solve as an EA slash PM at your respective organizations and using a formal structure. Okay, so what we're trying to outline here is using some techniques, some principles, some tools. In a second, we're going to hand out some templates on how you can kind of better structure your time and your, your projects and your initiatives, because I understand you have multiple initiatives that you're trying to battle at the same time. So going back to the first one, initiation, right? Let's take a look. There's two techniques that we use. Let's say you get a new project, a new initiative, and you know nothing about it. Okay, sounds familiar? Well, here's an exercise that we use. It's called mind mapping. Great exercise. So basically, I'm going to give you the summary points. You don't know any, you don't know much about the project. You would take whoever is the SME. Anybody know what a SME is? Subject matter expert, right? You as the project manager or the EA do not need to be the expert in whatever discipline it is that you're managing. You don't need to be the IT expert, the, uh, the labor expert. You basically need to organize the folks and invite them to this meeting. So I would, first thing I do is I would grab my SMEs relevant to that topic, book a conference room, and I would start whiteboarding. And with the mind mapping technique, you have a nucleus idea that you put right in the middle. So I kind of take that idea and I put a big circle around it. Then your team, your subject matter experts, are basically uh, giving uh, a bunch of other topics, as it says here, brainstorm main topics related to the center theme, and they add that around the central idea. That gets the juices flowing. That starts the creativity process to help uh, flesh out what your project is going to look like. Uh, if you want to get really technical, um, there are things where you can start doing dotted lines or straight lines or different colors. If it's a minor point or kind of a, a main point, back to that mind map nuclear idea. Make sense? Okay, a second technique is actually the converse. We call this the affinity diagramming technique. And basically, similar concept, you want to grab your SMEs. And by the way, don't do this exercise if you don't have the SMEs. Um, it's not worth anyone's while because you have to have the SMEs to provide input. Uh, but very similar in nature, you would hand out a bunch of stickies. So if I were to book this room here, uh, we'd hand out a bunch of stickies, and we would have everybody um, jot down ideas about what they know about the project. Okay? So the, the converse here is before you had a nucleus idea and you were revolving around that center idea. Here, I like the last bullet point here, it allows a team to move away from preconceived notions or categories, right? tapping into a different perspective looking at the problem and solution. So if we were to hand out all the stickies, everyone would just randomly throw this on the wall. Then we would evaluate all of the responses and look for commonalities 
to then rope them in kind of the orange stickies here into certain subsections. And that's one way to get your project started. So two techniques there. Okay, so the next question is, well, what is the project charter? Remember, we're at the top of the ladder there, that waterfall model. Initiate, you're still starting the project. You have a project charter. It is the formally authorizes the project to proceed. If you're gonna be responsible for task planning and assigning tasks to various people who don't re directly report to you, a charter is an important document that authorizes you as the role of project manager who's heading up this initiative. Uh, it includes things like the objectives, the success measures, what is in scope for the project, what is out of scope. Can't tell you how many times that's gonna save you and where they say, well, this was never in scope in the project, you can point to the charter and say that was never in scope. Uh, it has other things like the stakeholders, uh, the assumptions and constraints, uh, and then the high level risks. So as we mentioned, this is gonna be a very interactive, almost workshop, and what we're gonna do now is we're gonna hand out a charter for each table. So Martin in the back is gonna hand out You know, obviously this takes hours and hours and days to kind of go if this was a formal training, so we're keeping it a high level, but these are the major constructs that you would use to incorporate into a project charter. And the exercise becomes a lot simpler once you get to something like this. So this is kind of more the fully built out one. Again, this is also very high level. This can go a couple of pages if it's, if it's a little larger. But you're taking those components and now from nothing you had a mind mapping exercise. Maybe you had an affinity diagramming exercise. Now you've got the who, what, where, why, when, and how, right? And now you can or articulate what a charter would look like, right? Constraints, assumptions, user acceptance criteria, and then my budget happens to be 10.4 million. Right? And then you have to prove how you got into that. We call it bottom-up estimating, top-down estimating. Right? I have to uh, procure X number of windows. I've got uh, people I have to hire. All that goes into a charter. Okay, so that was a high-level version of the initiating stage. Now we move into planning. Right? So remember what we do in planning is this is the basic life cycle that the planning stage goes through. So the first thing you need to do is define the work. So again, think about the projects uh, and the real problems that you're trying to solve back in the office. You need to define the work. This is setting up your, what we call your project work plan or your schedule. Then you need to sort and sequence the work, right? Understanding the order of sequence that uh, task A and task B go through. And then you have to establish if there are any dependencies. We call this a finish to start relationship. You cannot start the next activity C until activity A actually completes. Right? There could be hard dependencies there. We call these predecessor and successor tasks. The next thing you have to define the duration. Maybe task A is only going to take 15 minutes, but task F is going to take four days. Right? So each discrete task would have its own duration. And then finally, you need to assign the resources. That could be a vendor, it could be an actual named resource. That's pretty much what the overall life cycle schedule management process would look like. We're going to kind of uh, bounce off of these real quick. This is basically what we call your milestone poll. This will, uh, we're going to show you where you're going to see this again in the executive project management status report. So your milestones aren't necessarily tasks. They are significant events in a project and more at a summary level. So remember we talked about the build, the test, Right, collecting requirements, those could be your milestones. Collect requirements complete. The build of X number of work units complete. Test of 55 documents complete. Those would be more your high level 
um, milestones, right? Think about a birthday, that's one day, right? It's one day, a significant event, your, your wedding day, uh, that's a milestone, not a discrete task. Then what that does, it begins to allow you to flesh out what your project schedule is going to be, right? So looking from left to right, you have what the task is, you have that duration that we talked about in days or hours, then you have a definitive start date, a definitive end date, right? And then you want to track the percent of completion, right? So is it 25% complete? Is it 50% complete? So you kind of gauge where you are for that one itemized task. Then again, as we mentioned, are there any dependencies, right, between vendor A and vendor B? If this is a construction project, right, you can't put the second coat of paint on until the first, uh, first coat of paint uh, dries. Responsibility organization, if it's just something within your organization, you could probably leave that blank. And then what most important uh, is you want to assign the responsible resource, right? This is where accountability comes into play. All right, so that's what your schedule would look like left to right. So here's an example of my Windows construction project, fully built out. Uh, how many people here has, have ever used the Microsoft Project tool? Okay, Project is an excellent tool. Uh, it can be a bit intimidating uh, if you're not familiar with it. I actually do teach a, a project course, um, but it's a great way to do some automation. But you can use a Microsoft Excel tracker. Uh, if that's easier, you can use various uh, forms for that. So now as you've exited the planning stage, now you're into what? The executing. And what were the three components of executing? Design, build, and test, right? So now let's take a look at executing. So we've got what we call the product box game. I've done this uh, all over the country. Um, and we call it the project management game. So this is gonna be the narrative. I'm gonna read this out. And now we're gonna pass out, every table is gonna get a box. So if we can now pass out the, uh, the boxes, one per table, and got a little surprise in each box. <laughs> a big surprise. But each box will pass these out. While those are being passed out, I'm going to read the narrative. This is going to be your second exercise. So remember, these are deliverables that you started with the charter is going to lead into this next exercise. Right? You're going to leverage what you initially started. All right, so I'm going to read this. this is, there is a trade show being held in New York City at the Jacob Javits Convention, not too far from here, being hosted by who? The Executive Leadership Support Forum. All right. This is an event for executive assistants who work on or manage projects. So each EA table right, has been invited to this event to illustrate the project that you are working on. This is going to be showcased to executives from all around the country who are flying into New York who may be interested in implementing your project idea within their respective organizations. All right, don't, don't take apart the box for a second, guys. <laughs> uh, hold on one second. Uh, we, we build this. Um, all right, so next, again, the product, you can be building either, uh, I'm not sure what projects you guys have decided upon in your charter, but it can be a product, right? Maybe it's a new projector, maybe it's a new appliance for the office, it could be a new invention, or it could be a project, like a new process that you want to implement in the office. Uh, and it could be real, it could be fictitious, don't worry about that. But it's it use the same project that you did in your charter. Uh, where we are in the project is you are currently in the execution, in the build phase. So using the design box, you're going to draw what your project or product will look like, which is going to act as the prototype for the trade show. So almost like we have vendor tables in the back here, each, t each uh, table would have a vendor table in this huge trade show at the Jacob Javits Convention. The box at minimum should have your, these are the requirements, your product or project name, you want to create a little logo, key marketing slogans or features that the customers would find interesting. Uh, customers want to believe that the product or service that they're observing is going to solve their problems. Remember, you're doing this to solve a problem in most cases in your workplace or in the marketplace. If you're designing a new sneaker, if you're implementing a new building, a new, new, company, new uh, system, be sure to focus not just on discussing the benefits, but the features which will often lead to the benefits. All right, so here's more of a summary version. All right, so you want to assign, so now assign a different project manager to the table. You want to determine the project product box concept. Well, you pretty much already did that with the charter. You want to collect requirements, which you might have done with your exercise already. So you want to leverage the things that you've already done. Uh, you can use sticky. So if you open the box, don't dismantle it, just open it briefly and then close it. 
Uh, you should have markers or sticky, I believe. You can start handing that out. Um, and then your design, so remember, before you jump into the build, you want to design. So start fleshing out on the yellow stickies what it's going to look like. And then when you guys come to consensus on the final result, then you implement the build. Right? So let's have, uh, and the project manager can assign who they want to do these tests. So the build, you want to take the markers. I think some of you guys might add two colors or one. You can steal from other tables. Don't worry. You can give it back. Um, you can start designing what your product is going to look like. All right. So I'm going to go back to this one if this one's more helpful. All right. We're going to budget 10 minutes for this. 12 minutes. companies where they are merging the technologies, Acme and ABC, right, and they have to merge that into a singular technology solution. I feel like I've been on the project for a whole year. Excellent job, round of applause, very nice. Okay, a couple more here. Which one am I familiar with? Which one is this? A DMS system, document management system, okay. Excellent. So they're going from traditional paper and uh, taking these documents and creating electronic form in a DMS, a document management solution. Excellent. Very nice job. Is that a real project? Yeah. Sounds real. Excellent. Oh, I'm sorry. She just wants to see the if you can hold that up for her. They're, they're going to take your ideas next, I think. And <laughs> Okay, do we have one here? Wow, what is this? I can, this is unbelievable. <laughs> We're going to take photos of all these boxes. Um, I don't remember this one. This is Tomatoes Raised Night. Oh, this is your website? Yes. Okay, explain the tomatoes. Okay, let me uh, just peer in a little bit. Where's your... Yeah, let's, let's separate. <laughs> I'll stand this way. Uh, here, yes, we have a, a cruise. Okay, so I'll help you start version. It's another off-site on a cruise. That's one I am signing up for. Thank you very much. Real quick here, guys. A couple minutes. Okay, wow. So I like the people that drew in all sorts of the box. I've seen people, we've done this all around the country. They open the box and they, it's just amazing. All right, so Project Soar Flying High. Explain. So we're moving from a small building in one town to a big building in another. Is that Sleepy Hollow, New York? Very nice section of New York. Very nice. And going to Tarrytown. From Tarrytown. Tarry Excellent, very nice. So before and after, we pulled up the as is and the to be, the current process 
and the future process. Very nice round of applause. Okay. Excellent. Okay. See, but this, this looks like our affinity diagram, right? Okay. This is an office move, real quick. The stick. This is an actual floor plan with cubicles and offices and conference rooms. Excellent. I've never seen that. Very creative. Round of applause. Very nice. Uh, here, yes. Let me just grab it so everyone can see. Uh, I see gap. Close the gap. That's right. This is, they call this the Bible of EAs. Pick one up when you leave at the end. Um, so this is kind of a handbook for executive assistants. Very nice. Very creative. Thank you. Over here. Another move. Okay. Okay, who can guess what this is? A very tiny office moving to a much bigger office because our company is expanding. Very nice. Very creative. Uh, Going to make our way around here. Say the best one. Yes, absolutely. Mine and Michael. Okay, it is a block party for patient week, right? Okay, so medical project, excellent. Certainly, we'll take a project to do that. Very nice, excellent. Uh, next to you, so uh, a closet concierge. Excellent. So use the app and it can coordinate outfits and things of that nature. Excellent. Is this a real project or a new invention? A new invention. Excellent. Look for that on the Apple Store. Okay. All right. Can we get everybody? Okay. Give yourselves a round of applause. That was an excellent. Not easy to do inside of 10 minutes. Okay. I'm going to kind of zip through the rest of your soul. The next stage, then you go into controlling. Remember, monitoring and controlling. This is something that you would continually do and monitor throughout the project life cycle. So this is an exercise that we're not going to do here uh, because of limited time. But as we'll mention at the end, you will get copies of our slide deck, including all of the templates, uh, which will be at the end. And again, we've used these, these templates that we're sending you for projects as low as 10,000. I've used it for projects in the hundreds of millions of dollars, even $2.5 billion. So you, it's really about the project and understanding the components and how to create a repeatable process with your templates. Okay, so this was an exercise. Uh, this is basically the template that you're going to see. An important deliverable as a project manager is reporting. I'd like to do an executive project management team meeting once a week, uh, and then you want to have an executive project management status report. This is what it would look like fully built out. And we've implemented this in many companies uh, around the country, this particular template. Right, so just looking from left to right, you'd have your go live. You'd have your delayed task immediate actions. Again, this is kind of a weekly view. What happened last week? Uh, what are your accomplishments? Are there any cross work stream dependencies? Uh, are there any key decisions that were made? And all the to the right side, what's on tap in the next couple of weeks? Right? It gives people a high level view because executives do not want to peer through a detailed project work plan. Absolutely not. Never send them a detailed project work plan. That is your bread and butter as a project manager, however. You should under, you should live, eat, sleep, and breathe your project management plan. They want to see kind of a dashboard reporting, right? Then you itemize your key risks and your issues. And this, remember the milestone poll? So from top to bottom, these are the key milestones that are coming up all the way through your go live. And then you have your color code in terms of where are you now, red, yellow, green. And then your trend that I like to do within the next two to, two to three weeks or two to three months, uh, if you're trending yellow, Right? Are you losing some resources? Do you need some money? You gotta throw some more money at the problem? Uh, that's your trend status. All right, again, we will send you the uh, deliverable for that. And then closing. So closing, we're not gonna kind of show you the project, but in closing out the uh, presentation, we want to touch a little bit on the project management communities and some of the certifications that we talked about a little bit earlier here. So again, you'll get the slide deck here. Uh, PMI chapters, how many people are familiar with the chapters? Okay, so you can, if you live in New York City, we have uh, one of the largest uh, chapter organizations in the world. So PMI is the overall umbrella. PMI New York City is, we have around 3,000 members. 
All right, so I, I, I'm actually the past president for PMI on New York City. I head up that organization. Uh, but we have them all around the world. Okay, that's a, a place you can physically go to. We meet in Midtown, we meet in Downtown uh, for executives and professionals and like-minded project management uh, practitioners. Uh, then we have, if you want more, just an online presence where you can download white papers and templates. We have a communities of practice in almost every discipline. Right, so you go to PMI.org, you'll get a wealth of knowledge uh, on this. Uh, and if you want to go kind of the grander scheme of things, we have congresses. Um, and we have some of the biggest speakers out there. Um, I think we had uh, the Magic Johnson, we've had sports stars, we've had inspirational speakers, we've had presidents, um, speakers or keynote. Uh, next one is going to be in Los Angeles in uh, October. Uh, getting down to the credentialing. So again, we mentioned the PMP which is over here, and again, you'll have this as a takeaway. What I've done for you is given you a brief description on what that credential, what the target audience would be for. Uh, it also has the prerequisites, so you can't just say, I want to go sign up to be a PMP. You have to qualify to even sit for the examination, meaning you need certain number of educational hours, you need certain number of project management hours in the application that you would execute to even qualify to sit for the examination. Uh, and then there's a cost to take the class, which varies. Uh, that's why we also say sign up as a member of PMI because you get a discount even for taking the examination. So just real quick, we've got the PMP, we've got the CAPM, which is very uh, popular for assistance for analysts. Right? The requirements is a, a little bit, uh, a little bit uh, less weight in terms of the PMP. Um, and then you have more for programs. You have risk, you have schedule. Uh, one that's becoming a lot more popular is agile project management. Um, and just kind of just zip through this. This is more from a PMI New York City perspective. We do academic outreach. I thought it was fitting to put this out here. We've done some business with the World Federal, Federal Federation of the United Nations across the street. Uh, we were actually the exercise we did here. I was fortunate enough to partner with the First Ladies. If you're familiar with the First Ladies organizations, um, so these were 16 First Ladies from uh, 16 different African countries, uh, hosted by Laura Bush. Uh, and Cherie Blair of the UK, former First Lady. Uh, and we actually did a very similar exercise in this room with that group. Uh, and it was funny, the only problem was nobody in the room spoke English. So everyone spoke French, so we had translators, we had earpieces, it was almost like we were across the street at the United Nations where their husbands were meeting. So they kind of go through an executive MBA program and they were very interested in project management because some of the projects that they implement are rebuilding schools, rebuilding hospitals. And they did the very exercise that you guys did in this room. Uh, we also partnered with Madison Square Garden. There was a huge $1 billion project. So just some New York City projects right here in our backyard at the 9-11 Memorial, uh, Second Avenue Line Subway. Who's familiar with that project? Multi, multi, $17 billion project. Uh, we've had speakers like Dr. Horidisi, Horidisianu, practice that, uh, who is the president of the MTA Capital Construction. So you get to hear uh, speakers from these uh, areas. And if you're interested in networking events, we do a whole bunch of networking events with rooftop parties. We do a wine bus tour that takes you from Manhattan into the Hamptons and comes back. And you're associating with people uh, in the PMI ecosystem. Uh, just some more things. We actually have a holiday. It's the second uh, November each year called International Project Management Day. Usually we do events around that. Uh, we've got a symposium right down at Credit Suisse. Uh, and the last slide here is volunteering. Uh, if once you get involved in the organization, there are huge volunteer opportunities. Uh, we would strongly encourage that you volunteer because project management, you really need to embrace yourself from all aspects and volunteering is just gonna give you a leg up. Uh, these are some sites. Uh, the last thing is a template. So again, we will be giving you the slide deck. So I think Phoebe will be sending that out on your, your Google Drive. Uh, and then we all also have the templates that we are gonna add here that you can take and use real time in your organization. And with that, thank you guys very much. Thank you very much, Josh. If anyone has any other questions about certification or what we discussed today, Josh's information will be on the Google Drive as well. I'm Martin Jamie. I'm a program manager with Pace University. We are here at the Executive Leadership Support Forum uh, representing Pace, Josh Lerner, our project management uh, uh, professional instructor, designer speaker. Uh, and I'm uh, just so pleased to be here talking about the, uh, the opportunities uh, to Yes. to validate the and build new skill set through the course of project management training. We all make our best. This year, yeah, well this year I'm actually at AM, just from going to LA uh, 